Hello and welcome back to my channel. So if you visited my channel before and watched any of my previous videos, you can tell that a lot of my videos were vlogs, lifestyle vlogs, day in the life, so being a mom, a wife, being in ministry, things like that. Um, well, over the past couple months, even with COVID, I kind of just lost inspiration to do any of those things and it was kind of tough, but I've kind of had a renewed passion for something I wanted to do, a platform to reach young girls because I am in youth ministry with my husband. So I just finished reading this book called Enough and I'll put the information on it more uh, down below. But um, I got it maybe about a year or so ago when Lifeway was closing their physical locations down and I totally forgot I had it, found it, thought it'd be a great read for this um, time and season that I am in and our ministry is in. So I decided to read it and I am basically going to give you my take on the chapters. Uh, this should take about six to seven weeks, preferably six, if I've mapped it all out correctly. And I'm basically just going to be talking about topics from a couple chapters each week um, and just kind of teaching. I don't want to say preaching because that's not what I do. Uh, I just want to maybe make an impact and hopefully make an impact on young women's lives. And it's helped me even as a mother to take this hold it in and instill it and use these ways as my daughter gets older herself. So without further ado, we're going to jump in this week. We're going to do chapters one and two, and it they are both about modesty, our femininity, and our bodies. So the first thing I'm going to touch on, and I'm sorry if I look at my notes a lot, I've printed them out, I typed them this weekend, and I just looked at them again this morning. So my apologies, I promise the content will get better, hopefully. <laughs> so, question, and I want you to take a minute to think about it. What does modesty mean to you? And I'm sure a lot of you, it's come to your mind, and you're like, modesty? No, thank you. I'm totally good. But you can stay on trend and still be modest. You can still have the newest shoes, the newest makeup. You can still have the newest shirts and pants and stuff like that and not be hiding your body. You can still be on trend and show it off. You want to be you. You want to be yourself and to be unique. What you wear represents you. So just remember that. We're going to touch more on that just a little bit. But definition of modesty, as I found it on the internet, is a behavior, a manner, or an appearance intended to avoid improperty or indecency. So, in layman's terms, it is dressing on a purpose, taking control, and not about hiding. Those are very important things. Before we move on any further, there are two things that she mentioned in the book that I want you to know about. Technically three, but number three was that the first two things are not bad things. The first is that our bodies are beautiful, so naturally we want to show it off. Now, some people, like myself, are not comfortable in the skin that they have. So sometimes they wear more clothes to try to hide what they have. And some others want to flaunt it. And that's totally fine. All bodies are beautiful, colors, shapes, sizes, whatever. They're all beautiful. So, of course, we want to show it off. And by showing it off, of course, men like to stare. That's the second thing. And that's not a bad thing. Men are hardwired to look at women. They are attracted to women. So, of course... They're going to find them attractive and stare at us. And I know hearing the term men staring can be scary. As a woman, I totally get it. I have, thankfully, in my 28 years, or well, less than that, I guess, um, have not have had any very creepy, uncomfortable encounters with men. So I'm very thankful for that. But not all of us are so lucky. But being modest, though, and referring to men staring, doesn't mean that cat calls and stares and inappropriate actions won't happen. There's still a chance to happen. So you must think if I hide it, you know, no one will notice me. But if I show it, people will notice me. But it's it's like a double sided double sided coin. It's it's kind of tough. Um, we always don't want the wrong ones to stare when we dress. That we don't want to attract the creeps. We want to, and as I touched on earlier, you want to dress for what you are trying to say, what you are trying to get. Obviously, if you're going for a job interview in a corporate world, you're going to want to wear a probably a pantsuit. So you kind of see where I'm going. 
Uh, but when it comes to stares, though, when you get the right man, like your boyfriend or your husband, and they stare at you, and they just think you're so pretty, it makes you feel comfortable in the skin you're in, and it just gives you the tummy butterflies, and it's awesome. But I want to give you a personal example of a uh, encounter with a gentleman uh, from when we were at our youth convention this year. We went to eat late after convention at Waffle House. Um, there was a very older gentleman that was intoxicated and he was making some remarks to some of the young girls in our group that made them very uncomfortable. Uh, and then so of course we had to leave and it was a very interesting conversation when we got back to where we were staying because these girls hadn't really had This happened to them before and most girls act this way they didn't they don't know how to react when a situation like this occurs but i felt in the moment it was a good teaching moment so i felt that i did what i needed to do to teach the girls how to act in the situations and how to physically act and talk and so but that was just an example of even at a church function you know, the man didn't know, you're still in those situations, girls. You know, you get the point. But also know that women that dress a certain way are not dressing to get the wrong stairs. That they are, they dress that way because they feel comfortable and feel beautiful. And like I said before, be comfortable, be you, be comfortable. I, I'll say this as delicately as I can and I guess I could say trigger warning coming up for anybody that has had this happen to them um, but you hear a lot of the time that people say well she got this because of the way she was dressing or she shouldn't have wore that short skirt if she didn't want this to happen to her and uh, that's wrong I don't think any female of any age race whatever is asking for somebody to do something very wrong to them just because they decided to wear a little shorter of a dress or a little bit more skin shown up top I don't think that's a reason um, so I want you girls or whoever's watching this to think think twice before they judge somebody about when they see something on the news or on the on social media about something that's happened to somebody don't automatically jump to conclusions and make her the bad guy. Let's just think it through. So, a little food for thought for you. But now we're going to talk, hop into out of the modesty thing into our femininity, which sounds funny to me in a way because femininity sounds like a minity from Mima. No? Okay. <laughs> now, our femininity it is a superpower. Women are awesome. We hold a lot of power. I mean, come on, we birth babies. We build me, we, they're in our womb for nine months, and then we have them, and then they are here. And it is the most amazing thing. And when I think about that, I've done it twice. It is just, wow, like it's crazy. But women hold a lot more power than just giving birth. That We're smart, we are physically strong. There's a bunch of things. And I know a lot of you think, kind of when I mentioned modesty, you jump to like what you would think of modesty, which is hiding and wearing clothes that show no skin. A lot of you probably think, oh, femininity, like the feminist movement. There's a difference. All women have a femininity to them. And then, of course, there is a feminist movement, which I won't really touch on because I'm not very knowledgeable in it. But I will tell you guys to do your own research on that um, if you're curious about it. But Women rock, women are powerful. But kind of what I touched on earlier, which is, you know, we talked about what is on the ends, like judging women. Okay, so we've all heard the term, what matters most is what's on the inside, right? That's true, but it's not completely true <laughs> it's true but it's not true so here we go um your heart your personality and everything that makes you is on the inside 
that's on the inside. That's what makes you smile and act and laugh and do everything that's, that's you. That's what's on the inside. But what's on the inside is what God is looking at. He's not looking at your double chin. He's not looking at your big jiggly thighs. You know, he's not looking at your hair. No, he's looking at what is on the inside. Your pure heart, that you do good for people, others, that you do good for his kingdom. That's what he's looking at. It's our worth and our value, and we are all worthy to have an unmatched value in the eyes of God. We all deserve that love, and a lot of girls don't feel that they deserve that because of the way they look, something that has happened in their lives that they think that it is unforgivable. It is not unforgivable. In his eyes, you are loved and cared about, and you are his daughter. So, I love you, and I don't even know you. Who's ever watching this? But, let me give you the scripture from Psalms 139, 13 through 16. It's a little bit of a long one. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Another scripture that I put earlier, but I skipped it because I didn't feel that it worked there, was um, 1 Samuel 16, 7. And it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at, which would be our physical outside appearance, but people look at the app, but the Lord looks at the heart. This is good food for thought. I feel that this should be written on every girl's mirror at home when they get up in the morning. But yet, we talk about the inside. The outside does matter. The outside of our body does matter because our body is a temple and a gift from God. And our body is only a temporary home for our spirit until we pass. So think of it that way. Uh, take care of your insides, take care of your out. I'm not the best example of it. I am not very healthy, but I know I need to be for myself, for my kids, for my husband, and to do more work of the Lord because I have to be active to keep moving. And another quick one that I missed is Song of Solomon 4, 7. You were altogether beautiful, my love. There is no flaw in you. That's another mirror verse. You need to go write it down. Let's continue with more slang. It's what matters on, it's all that matters on the inside, right? Well, we've also never heard of don't judge a book by its cover, right? And let's be honest here. Let's have a real moment. How many of us are guilty of doing that when someone walks into class or is walking down the street? I'll raise my hand. And I catch myself doing it a lot more these days with everything that's going on in the world. And I think it's just habits that we have to break. All girls need to feel like we are enough. Enough, keyword, let's remember this word. To do so, we must not judge, judge others or ourselves too harshly. Like I said, I think it's a hard habit for all of us to break. And I think a lot of us judge because of jealousy. I think a lot of us judge because we're uncomfortable in our own skin. Um, but let's try not to judge so much. And I feel like that's beating a dead horse. So that's said in every youth group and to all girls, but try not to judge each other. Um, don't judge ourselves too harshly. That's what causes um, eating disorders and body dysmorphia and things like that is that we have to love ourselves. I'm not happy with the skin that I'm in, but I'm gonna love it because I wake up every morning and I'm able to do the things I need to do to get through the day. So we're gonna revert back real quick to the way we dress. I kind of said earlier that we would revert back to dressing and things like that, but let's get more in depth with it. So the way that we dress is how we identify with others. If we want to dress like the popular kids 
or the I'm trying to think the jocks all the other typical school stereotypes everybody wants to dress to fit into that category like I know for a fact that it's everybody has Air Force Ones everybody you want Air Force Ones too it's just a habit everybody's got AirPods you want AirPods too I get it I, I was young once too it's hard to believe the best way of youth girls to have self-expression is through their clothing choices like I said it's how you make yourself unique, how you make separate yourself from the typical. For me though, speaking of fashion, my fashion sense has evolved greatly and it still is. I'm 28, in January I'll be 30. No, I'm sorry, Ooh, 29, no. <laughs> um, so I clearly remember the phases of the layered tank tops and my mom put me in overalls when I was a kid. I remember I went through my punk rock skater phase and I still love all black. It is a part of my life. It's part of my wardrobe. I will rock all black all day, every day. It's just how it is. I had my skater shoes, my DCs. It was a good time and it's still evolving. I still like to look kind of grungy rock. I like to look vintage. I sometimes like to dress up and be frilly, but not very much. I'm very boho chic. It's very, I've got the lazy mom leggings and a torn t-shirt. Fun look. It works. Clothing is a statement of oneself. I am so quirky. I am so silly. I am all over the place. I still, at 28, it's still a lot. I don't know what I want to do with my life, which is nuts to think about because I have a degree. It's crazy. Um, but clothing is a statement of yourself. So the days that I feel like I want to be a little bit of a baddie, I wear all black and my leather jacket and my boots. Um, the days I want to be kind of whimsical, I wear kind of flowy stuff. It just, it depends. It depends how you, it's how people know you. Modesty is picking clothes that communicate with what people want to think about you. Kind of what I touched on earlier, you're going for an interview for a job in corporate America, you wear a pantsuit. You display your accomplishments. If you're a soccer star, you're probably gonna wear your soccer shirts, soccer team, sweatshirts, uh, hats, bracelets, stuff like that. You're going to, that's basically people go, okay, she must like to do soccer. She must like to do track. She must like cheer because you're probably wearing something that represents what you do. And that's not a bad thing, that's good. You should do that. You do not display your accomplishments and not what you do not want people to think of you. So think of it that way. People like I said, it kind of, this all kind of rolls back into the judging, people judging one another, what's on the inside that matters most type thing. I can't stress it enough how much I think girls need to start being their own selves and being unique. Let's step away from the fold. Let's stop being so, I gotta look like this person looked on Instagram. No. Dress you, do not dress the a wrong way and, just, and put the wrong image in people's minds. Be comfortable with what you wear. Don't dress in a certain way because you feel like you have to. If you wanna be known for your smile, smile a lot if you do not want your chest to be as noticeable and the first thing people see cover it up try not to show so much cleavage um i will say this and i don't know probably none of you heard about it. this was maybe a year or two ago i was told um there was a hollywood actress and i don't think i don't know of her name um she was in her teens she was younger but she had a very heavy chest and she did not want to be on as a young actress actress with a big chest so she went and got her boobs reduced so she did something that would bring out the best in her which is people want to see the absolute best of you continuing on the thought of if you smile a lot smile how you dress appearance Let's talk about boys for a minute, men. Let's talk about that. If a man wants a woman who is smart or compassionate, he will seek out one that has those qualities. So show those qualities in public. Be nice, don't play dumb, don't play ditzy, even though it's fun sometimes. Don't, in the end, it's not worth it. 
We do not use sex as a tool, ladies, girls. I could talk about this for another video series, which I might do. And we'll touch more on it probably in a couple chapters. But we do not use sex as a tool, okay? No, no need to use it. Our bodies are beautiful. Yes, you want to show it off. But let's not use sex as a tool to get what we want and to please people. No. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 31, 30. So, since this is a Christian book study, if you're looking for a godly man, you must be a godly woman. Also, if he's looking, vice versa, if he's looking for a godly woman, you need to be the godly woman that he's looking for, and you need to display it in all aspects of your life, not just when you're in church, but like going to Bible studies, going to friends' house. I mean, displaying those things to them. Attract the best. You're young. The one you're with right now may not be the one you're going to marry, but let this be a practice for you to learn what I say, do, and dress is what I attract. And when the time comes as you're older, you'll be like, wow, that lady on the internet really made a lot of sense. And we all desire one thing. Money? No. Just kidding. Looks? Just kidding. Respect. R-E-S-P-C-T. Respect. We use modesty as a tool. This is the tool we do use. Not sex. We use modesty as a tool to get this one thing in life that is respect. With respect, we have to respect each other and respect ourselves. So we all know, and we are all guilty of it in one way or another. I am. Uh, all girls want what another girl has. A girl with naturally beautifully curly hair wants straight hair. A girl with straight hair wants curly hair. The skinny girl wants to be thick like Kim K in the booty. So, I mean, every girl wants what they want. I would like to have my sister's lips. She has lips. I know. And it's sad. My son got that. So, I'm sorry, dude. But yet, when we degrade ourselves and we wish for the things that others have and we hate what the Lord has given us, that old Satan, old scratch down there, he is watching and loving every minute of it. He is sitting there thinking, look at them, hating themselves and not happy with God's handiwork. You know, that, that when I was reading that and wrote that, I, it kind of hit me strong. I was like, wow. You know, he knit us in the womb. He knew what we were going to be way before anything else. And we are sitting here hating ourselves for the things that he didn't give us, that others have. And jealousy, that's a sin, man. Jealousy will just destroy everything. And real beauty, once you realize that you are perfect and enough, there it is again, is freeing and makes you feel alive. No more hiding in the shadows and letting the darkness of society's standards weigh you down. Once you can break that mold, break the mold in your mind, and you're finally at peace with who you are, physically, mentally, spiritually, everything, it is the most freeing feeling you will ever have. And it's a work in progress for me, but I know that at a young age, it is a formidable time in your life, and I want to pour these words into whoever is listening because it will do you some good. I promise. But let's do, let's wrap this up and talk about one more thing. Self-care. I love self-care. Hashtag self-care Sunday. I am a participant in that. I love a good face mask. Then let's start practicing body love. We take care of ourselves but we may not love what we're taking self-care of. Again, to end, we cannot love ourselves and be enough until we love everything about us. Be you. Well, that is the end of week one. I hope you pulled something out of this, hopefully. Um, if not, then I'm sorry, <laughs> but I will hopefully have week two up next week, um, and we'll go from there. I will link um, the book down below if I can find it online, if it is still being produced. I'm sure it is. Um, 
I will link my social media links down below. Subscribe. I promise more videos are coming. I've said that before. I really mean it this time. So yeah, I hope you girls enjoyed this. Share this with a friend. I'm looking forward to this series very much. I hope that it has an impact on someone's life. And until next week, guys, bye. Love you. God bless. See ya.